guys, the Dane here, Adaptive Exercise and Rehab, coming back to you with the five best exercises for manual wheelchairs to be performing. So exercise is something that's absolutely essential across the human lifespan and something that is becomes more of a factor when you become disabled. Um, the evidence and research behind exercise becomes more of a rehab factor for anybody living with a chronic disability, uh, particularly paralysis. Um, so what, what comes into question when an individual becomes paralyzed, they go back to the gym, they know objectively that they have to be doing some type of exercise, but figuring out what to do and how to do it is going to be the most important thing that they figure out. Um, that's a lot of times where personal trainers come into play as they take the guesswork out of those different types of instances to make sure that that client is able to do exactly what is right for them uh, without having to have any type of essentially guesswork um, in play. Um, when you're in a wheelchair and wheelchair bound, everything becomes a heck of a lot more difficult. So with that being said, creating a program for the lowest hanging fruit for wheelchair users, in particular manual wheelchair users, is what I've set out to do five exercises I've put together with this program are backed by research, um, backed by empirical data, backed by anecdotal evidence as well then too, but also from that are things that are going to have the greatest functional return, or functional application for clients or for individuals living in a, or who are wheelchair bound, in addition to having the uh, kind of the most universal applications for uh, a wide variety of individuals living with paralysis. Um, how I've programmed this this, uh, this protocol is through a C6 injury and below. So individuals who have use of their biceps, a little bit of triceps, um, some upper body motion, but no use of their hands. Um, so a lot of times we'll be asking clients to use active hands for any type of pulling movements um, and potentially some wrist stabilizers or any type of pushing movements. So the five exercises that I have listed, the first one is going to be one of the most important ones, and that's a lat pull-down movement. Uh, lat pull-down movement is going to get the hands up overhead, stretches and contracts the muscles in the upper back and the scapular region. Um, reason why this is one of the most important ones is any type of overhead scapular movement right here is something that is going to be very difficult for anybody in a wheelchair to be doing to be able to get a stretch. Uh, being able to move the scapulas from retraction to protraction and be able to move uh, basically any of those muscles that could be tight in that area, being able to allow them to have the uh, weight pull them up into a stretch position and essentially work into a dead hang. Uh, it's unbelievably great for uh, upper back pain, scapular mobility, postural support, things of the sort like that. Um, but in particular, this is very, very good for working on um, better postural mechanisms to be able to pull back and down behind your torso so that you're engaging your lats and your rhomboids more. Additionally, it's going to help with any type of uh, forward head posture and counteracting the motions of pushing the wheelchair forward and uh, allowing us to retract. Second from there is a forward leaning chest press or a dip rickshaw. Uh, it's two, two different exercises that perform uh, that are performed relatively similar. Um, both have similar aspects in terms of helping a client with wheelchair propulsion and then pop over transfers or transfers in general. Uh, so wheelchair propulsion meaning that we are able to, or that client is able to feel stronger and more confident pushing up ramps, pushing through doors, pushing anywhere essentially, having more strength for pushes, but also having greater endurance as well then too. Additionally from that, pop over transfers are something that this is basically taking a, a keen aspect to by allowing the person to work on a head to hip relationship, so basically cueing them over their own hip and over their center of gravity and allowing them to have a greater push to be able to do a wheelchair kind of uh, a weight transfer or a weight shift. Uh, this is something that's incredibly important. Um, third is a chest supported supinated row. Uh, so chest support meaning that it's going to basically artificially support their core, so their lower back. Uh, if it's not active, it won't be an issue. It'll keep them safe as well then too. Supinated is going to be palms up, and the reason we're doing palms up is that's anatomical position in terms of what um, is taught in universities and taught just as just a general anatomical position. Um, outside of that too, it also helps get a person into more of a uh, retracted state, but also when you're doing this motion, you're able to work through a full postural support, so you're able to get your elbow behind your torso, push your chest out, 
feature lower traps, lower rhomboids, um, and then lower lats as well then too. Again, working on postural support, counteracting the forward push type motion to be able to give the person more of that anterior to posterior equilibrium. Fourth is the seated elliptical, which is also referred to as the new step. Um, the seated elliptical is a fantastic piece of equipment. As the name implies, it's basically simultaneously moving their arms and legs at the same time. Uh, but this allows for a rotational type of full body movement that can be used for anybody with uh, an incomplete injury or a complete injury. Uh, complete injuries, it's mostly going to be just the person using their upper body to push and pull while their legs are moving in synchrony with their body. Um, it creates a lot of fascial restriction, or it creates a, it basically decreases a lot of fascial restriction, uh, increases blood flow, helps the client get lymphatic drainage too, uh, but also helps them feel where their legs are in space too. And with an incomplete injury, clients can actually push through their legs, push and pull back and forth with their legs. With this, it's a reciprocal motion too. So if a client has one arm that is a biceps only and the other arm is also biceps only, they can just pull and have that other arm pull forward, pull, 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 pull back and forth. Um, same thing with legs, if they can only push, you can just have them do quad extensions uh, so they can push into resistance while that other leg is coming back on up and just go back and forth. Working through their strong suits, but you also have a great ability to work through anything that may be challenging for them. But it's a very, very low hanging fruit, something that anybody can do and has a lot of applications and a lot of safety um, kind of precautions that are taken to be able to span the gamut in terms of disability functions. Uh, fifth, last but not least, is going to be the upper body interval training on the ski erg. So the ski erg is basically uh, simulating a um, cross country skiing type environment where the person is just heaving themselves up a hill. Um, the reason why this is a um, perfect workout for anybody with a wheelchair is it basically is working through the largest muscle group that they have active, uh, which is going to be their lats. Um, <clears throat> so with that being said, with them using their lats, they're going to be using the most amount of blood flow, the most amount of cardiac output. This is also getting their hands up over their head and then having them push as hard as they can. A lot of times with this, you're asking for clients to do um, interval training. So you can, one thing I've done is 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off, do that for five rounds. And that's a great workout to get your heart rate up, to get your, um, get your blood flowing, to get your hands up over your head, to work every muscle that you have for yourself too. But it also, again, kind of relates back to that dip rickshaw position where that head to hip relationship where the client can be up forward and bring themselves over their knees and over their toes so that they're in a better position so that they have that relationship more dialed in for everyday practical living. So those are the five exercises that I put together that are kind of the lowest hanging fruit and create the most equilibrium across the board for anybody living with a um, paralysis or living in a wheelchair. Um, but in addition to that, I also went ahead and put together a few more movements, which are specialty considerations, um, which kind of engage different, more vulnerabilities or uh, more vulnerable movements, but also require more equipment as well too. Um, uh, the one specialty movement, the first specialty movement is a med ball rebounder toss. Um, so with this, you're requiring a medicine ball, uh, two to 10 pounds is usually pretty good, somewhere in that range. And then you need a rebounder or a trampoline that's at some type of angle. Um, so with that, you're basically cueing the client to throw the ball directly at the center of the trampoline or the rebounder, and then have that come directly back at them. So you're working on hand-eye coordination, open, closed chain motions, core, um, core acclimation too, because they're having to figure out how to position themselves in their chair after the ball's gone, and then immediately once that ball comes back to them too. Um, it has a lot of practical applications within everyday stuff too, as people just set stuff up on their lap, and they have to go ahead and toss it one way or another. Um, you can always cue the client to do um, straight forward, which is the, the safest one to do, at least right off the bat. As they get good and pro proficient with that, you can have them angle um, horizontally towards it, or a perpendicular angle, 90 degrees, and have them do lateral tosses at the uh, medicine ball too, or at the trampoline rather. Um, so it creates a more dynamic environment. Again, this is more, more equipment, but also requires a little more skill, um, but it's something that I highly encourage anybody living with, um, uh, living in a wheelchair to try at some point. Uh, additionally from that, the Easy Stand Glider um, is a piece of equipment that we use. 
that basically has a hydraulic pump that instead of a seated elliptical as the new step was, this is more of an actual standing elliptical, but it's an adaptive, uh, adaptive piece of equipment rather. Um, this is fantastic because it is, accomplishes multiple factors of getting the heart pumping by having the person in a standing position and engaging their cardiovascular system additionally by other means by having them push and pull with their arms and having their legs move concurrently with that. From there you're working on bone and mineral density too um, by having them just in a standing position for long periods of time. Also psychologically speaking it's just nice to be up eye level with everybody again too. So again this is another piece of uh, it's another movement that is more passive. Um, Sorry, this is another movement that is active, but can be done in a passive nature as just bone mineral density can be performed within this movement. Um, but additionally, it also does require the piece of equipment, easy stand, um, glider. And then the third piece of additional specialty movement that I have is a face pull slash a shoulder press. Um, so again, more equipment, more stability, more competency within this movement too. So you see individuals performing this after they've been understanding of how they can move within their chair, particularly when they have their hands up over their head, since their center of gravity will kill them to go forward or backward, less stability for them. Um, so a face pull would be engaged in deltoids and working on their upper back. Again, reducing restrictions in their upper back, kind of counteracting any type of forward head posture that that client might have. And then from there, it's engaging their deltoids, uh, just getting their shoulders engaged also. The slash within this movement is a shoulder press too. So a shoulder press is ideally you'd want that client to do one shoulder press arm at a time uh, so that they can use that other hand as stability so that they can hold on to their wheelchair or wrap their hand underneath their leg or do something so that they won't tip off to the side within that, uh, in that motion. Uh, additionally with this, um, clients are obviously pushing a weight up over their head. So as you go higher up, the more and more that that person's going to have too. So just understand that the higher you go, the more vulnerable you're going to be. So I encourage individuals to try lower um, ranges of motion at first and then work your way up as you see fit and you see safe as well. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. And I hope you guys understand. If you guys have any questions about these five movements or eight movements in total, please leave a comment. I highly encourage anybody living uh, with paralysis, spinal cord injury, stroke, anything of the sort like that to attempt these movements for everyday practical daily living and see how they um, kind of help you with um, some of the areas that you may be kind of dealing with in terms of struggles. Um, thanks guys, catch you in the next one. Peace.